dear Clarence, did I ever tell you that I think Clarence is a, it's a really interesting name. I've never known anybody, <laughs> Ooh, never known anybody by the name of Clarence. And if I misspelled it, please forgive me. It's not because of a lack of respect. It's just I'm not sure if it's an E like Claire Ants or an A like Claire Ants, like ants in your pants. You know what I mean? Anyway, I had a lot of fun talking about all those amazing things that make the world go round. <laughs> Maybe. This is a reminder. Walk every hour starting. If you finish this, just let me know you're done. Otherwise, I'll remind you in the morning. I, I've been doing some acid recently and... <sighs> this is a reminder. Walk every hour starting. If you finish this, just let me know you're done. Otherwise, I'll remind you in the morning. I, I like I said, I, I keep having it's a bad trip and I got to stop. So I think you're going to be a good influence on me, Clarence, because I know I need to stop. Love, Amber. Dear Amber, I'm, I'm truly confused. I thought that I made such a poor impression when we met for coffee that you wanted nothing to do with me going forward. And it was one of those marginally endurable 25 minute oh we met on a dating site sort of exchanges and yet your letter seems more than receptive i i wonder i, I noted your reference to drugs and needing to stop The letter reads as though it was written while you were tripping. And so, are you really accountable for what you say in this realm? Did you write your letter when tripping? Amber, I'm, I'm receptive to seeing you again. I find you... Uh, charming uh, you, you, your twinkle eye was like oh my god her eyes are twinkling when i talk and i thought afterwards you might have just been crying because you were having a hard time <sighs> however i must dare i assert that if you are in fact addicted to hallucinogenic drugs there's no reason for us to correspond any longer. I truly hope that's not the case. Clarence. Oh, <laughs> dear Clarence, I see you spell it with an A. That's very unusual because I looked it up and I'm pretty sure most people spell it with an E. I, I, I could tell 
dear Clarence, that you were a special kind of guy and I was not in an altered state then. Period. I I toyed around with psychedelics and I can't say I've stopped them forever, but I'm not currently, nor do I plan to, in the foreseeable future, trip. So now I've got that dealt with. I hope you believe me, because you actually sounded just a little bit like my mother. I don't need another mother. I especially don't need a male mother. Oh, wow, that sounds cool. Male mother. Male mother. Oh, my God. Is that male with an A? Or oh, I'm sorry, Clarence. Sometimes I get fascinated with the way things are spelled. But I don't want a male mother. I want... I don't want another mother. I just want a guy in my life that's nice. All I want is nice. So Clarence, if you're a nice guy that can deal with someone, a nice chick, a nice chick, that took a few trips a while back, but doesn't intend to go far anymore, then I'm your kind of girl. And I'd really like to see you on Sunday. Sober, straight, and independent, yours, Amber, with an R. Dear Amber, um, I, I'm delighted to learn that your original letter was written in a grounded state that I can readily relate to. As a professor at the university, I have to be extremely careful about who and how I interact with members of the university community. And although I'm really only 18 years older than you are, I don't consider our age to be a barrier of any sort. Your smile is most engaging and and the way you speak to my concerns about doing drugs, I, parentheses, I, I know so many of your classmates come to class stoned or tripped out, or I don't even know all the types of hallucinogens and mind alterings that are going on. Although I did go to school with Timothy Leary, but, 
I do hope you'll respect the cautionary note I have in here. Graduation is all of two weeks away. And once you are untethered from the university umbrella, I would think that a picnic together at a spot of your choosing, if you'll be just oh so patient, would be my privilege to join. If that's acceptable to you, please let me know if you prefer Prosecco or Ripple. Yours truly, Clarence. Dear Dr. Clarence Roberts, I didn't think you noticed I was in your class. at all, Clarence. I, well, some people, like my mom, says I have daddy issues. And that's why I always want to go out with guys that are so much older than me. True confession, Clarence, with an A. You're not the first. You're not the second. Clarence, with an A. You're not even the third. Yes, I have I have a thing about older guys, especially when, oh my God, I can't believe I'm writing this, especially when I need something from them. That sounds bad, Clarence. That sounds really, really bad. It's just the way that you choose to look at it. I mean, sort of like you scratch my back. I'll scratch yours. And I think perhaps waiting till graduation is more than I can handle. I mean, after all, Time is of the essence, and I really would like to graduate. Everlasting love, desire, and not everlasting love, not desire. And let's just cut to the chase, Clarence. Why did you write me to begin with? Curiously, Amber. Dear Amber, I've waited until 
after the graduation ceremony and I was delighted to see you receiving your magna cum laude certificate as part of the graduation ceremony. The A plus that I gave you was based upon your work as a student in my class with no expectation of anything that might be forthcoming. I am on tenure track and I don't want anything that might appear as a blemish on my reputation. Tenure is extremely important to me. Truth be told, if I have tenure, I will have some status somewhere. I hope that's not too personal of a reveal. I would be most pleased to meet you for a post-graduation picnic with either Ripple or Prosecca. And should you choose to join me at this post-graduation date, I will be pleased to share with you why I wrote to you originally. I, once you hear that, I hope you'll understand why I was unable, unable, I was afraid to put it in writing. Congratulations again on completing your stellar academic career. Clarence. Oh, Clarence. You know, I'm a sucker for humility and self-deprecation. How did you know that about me? I mean, how did you know that that knife of emotion that heads straight to my heart was going to be those very things. Because I want you to know, no one, no man has ever been self-deprecating and humble around me. They usually want to try to tell me how great they are and how smart they are and how they're going places and little old me can go along. But there's you, you've got your PhD and you're on tenure track and you're still humble. You're still self-deprecating and not in a bad way. I find that incredibly attractive. And my shrink told me last week when I told him what I wrote to you, that I was just putting that out there because I was afraid. I was afraid of possibly entering into a real relationship after I graduate. And so I made it seem like I was a tripping, crazy ass girl and not the person that I think you see me for. Brilliant, dedicated, and capable. How would this brilliant, dedicated, and capable girl like to hang out with that self-deprecating, humble, incredibly intelligent older man, all I can say is, let's do it. I want to hear why you wrote me to start with. I'm yours, Amber.
Dear Amber, the, the way you see and appreciate my gentler side is truly a treat. It's rare for me to show that to anyone amongst my peers. And I guess I trusted you in some way that I could put that forward and that you would hold it in a respectful regard. It certainly appears as though you have. Amber with an R. I have three questions awaiting your answer. Would you prefer a ripple, which also begins with an R? Would you like to meet for a picnic next Sunday at 1 p.m., weather permitting? And if I may be getting a little ahead of myself, I was planning on buying a new twin mattress. Do you think my long-term interests would be best served with a queen-size mattress? Hopefully, Gregory. Dear Clarence, um, a little confused is Gregory you nickname because I think there's things you're not telling me. Um, you know, I think it's always healthy to have plenty of room to sleep. So that would be my advice. I mean, go for the bigger bed. I mean, you'll be more comfortable in the long run, regardless of what happens. Yes. I would love to meet you for a picnic. But you don't need to buy any of the alcohol. I personally like Boone's Farm apple wine and I'll bring it for us. Looking forward to seeing you. And you can tell me all about Dr. Clarence Gregory and why you reached out to me to start with. In the meantime, I'm going out of town for a graduation trip. And I'll see you, how about 2 p.m. in front of the band show on campus. You'll know it's me, because I'll be the girl that's holding up that Boone's Farm apple wine box and smiling a real big smile. Can't wait to meet you without all the academic stuff in the way. Amber. Dear Amber, let me once again compliment you on your attentiveness. I shared my middle name with you as part of my desire for you to know me better. And I thought that if I revealed something small like that, it wouldn't be intimidating. You seem to have taken it in good spirit and in fact realized that it was my middle name based upon the way you addressed the last note, which I thought was very sweet of you. Uh, a 2 p.m. assignation at the bench as you describe with a bottle of Boom Farms held forward as some version of a Statue of Liberty, I imagine.
I've never been on a date with a hippie chick before. Can't wait. Greg. Dear Greg with two G's. How sweet. How very, very sweet. That's all I got to say. How very, very extraordinarily sweet. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where this goes. Really, really stupid. Oh, dear Greg with two G's. Yes, I'll see you Sunday. Just like we promised. This is going to be the last letter that I write until then because I got to get on the bus and head back home for the next couple days because my mama you know the mama that I didn't want you to be she's expecting me home to celebrate my graduation and to help me finish my application to medical school My mom's going to help me figure out what I want to do with my life, Gregory. And I can't wait to talk to you because I'm sure that you have ideas about what makes a good life. Yours excitedly. Dear Amber, I just wanted you to have this brief note so that you know how much I'm looking forward to our meeting once you're back in town. F following your advice, I have in fact purchased a queen size mattress. And since I won't be wearing my professorial garb, in order for you not to be confused by who I am, you will recognize me by the tag that will be hanging off the side of my hat. I always tear them off of any mattress that I buy in spite of federal regulations that prohibit it. You're a bad boy, Greg. Note to self. Sometimes you get surprised. Sometimes what's inside the package is much more compelling than what's on the outside. Be patient and try to give Greg with two G's a chance, even though he's a whole hell of a lot older than you are. 
anything's possible. Love you, Amber. Amber. I don't think they ever met. I heard that he found out that he wasn't getting tenure and he left with a backpack and in terrible shame. He never sent her another note. Yeah, I heard Amber took a pretty bad trip then. She went to a Rolling Stones concert and tried to get backstage. She went to Altamont? Well, that's what they said. I don't know if it's true or not, but oh. that's what they said. She had such a bright future. Yeah, well, you know, that's true. And actually, I, I think Greg... Despite he was being a bit older, right? I mean, he must have been almost 40. I think he was going out to really figure out who he was. And I hope, I hope for his sake that he does, because I didn't think he was a bad guy. Back at the lounge, not going to be the same without him. True. And the class of 1970 is not going to be anything like the class of 1968. But that's the way life is. Enough commiserating. Come on, let's go down to the pub and have a beer. Okay. Okay. See you there. I love Boone's Farm. I'm good. Okay. See you over there. All right. So David and I just performed the letter. And we thank you for staying with us and for being with us on this final set of uh, the Favis um, on this lovely second Sunday in January. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you. Well, you won't see me because I'll be in Iceland. You'll see somebody as the host. Keep my fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. You're going to have a really good time. And I'll let you know in two weeks how it was in Iceland. If the volcano doesn't erupt and keep me there longer. Bye-bye. <laughs>